Okay. Yeah. Okay. So uh, if you observe the, um, the schedule and you see what I presented on, you see I switched topics a little bit. So my paper was one of these papers where you write an abstract and be super proud of it, and then during the work, you actually work on it, you discover it's not as I want it to be. So I will present on a little bit different topic, but you will enjoy it nonetheless. It's about <laughs> blurred lines, games as tools of research. So um, <clears throat> I'm doing a lot of agent-based modeling, and. Um, for all of you who are not so uh, familiar with agent-based modeling, let's give you the very quick way to introduce, introduce it, the Wikipedia way. An agent-based model, ABM, is one class of computational models for simulating the actions and interactions of autonomous agents with a, <coughs> with a view to assessing their effects on the system as a whole. So, agent-based models are basically computer-based simulations, little computer-based laboratories, where we can explore human behavior. and. Here we see um, a basic agent-based model written in NetLogo for um, determining the action radius of hunter-gatherer groups. So we have a lot of parameters, you see them all to the left, and we can play around with them and we can change them and we can see how the emerging pattern of behavior is changed due to our different data sets. And emergence is a very important term in agent-based models because Models should not be deterministic, we should not have an outcome programmed into them, but we should allow them to emerge, to see patterns of behavior coming from the code that we as an archaeologist or as a programmer or as an observer at all did not expect in this way. Or maybe expect in this way, but then we see how we can manipulate it to a certain goal. So, emergent behavior can appear when a number of simple entities, agents in our case, operate in an environment forming more complex behaviors. That's agent-based models. So what makes a game? Because we're talking about games today. Games are made of goals, rules, challenges, and interactions. And this is pretty much the same to an agent-based model, where I give my agents a goal, where I give them rules, and where I have interactions from the agent with the virtual reality I create, which I can observe. So the case I want to argue is that games and agent-based models are not that far away and we might use games as tools of research by observing the behavior of the player and try to collect the data and analyze the data and see how they tackle um, archaeological questions in a playable way. Because games are a rule-based emergent system in which players have an agenda and I'm catering to a uh, archaeological audience today, so most of you might have pl played D and D or something else in their days. So you know there is random behavior, but there's also emergence, um, and there's also a lot of fun. So why not have fun while doing research? Um, if we look into board games, it becomes more clear to draw a very um, to draw the comp comprehension between games and um, agent-based models. If you see the agent-based models before, we have this patch-based world. And if you look at Settlers of Catan, one of the most, uh, uh, what you say, like the, the most knowing Euro games, so to say, we also have this patch-based world. And these patches have val values. And the values relate to how certain resources could be gathered from the patches. So it doesn't take much to flip an agent-based model into a video game. And this is what I try to do, to use games as tools of research. And I will just give you a quick example of Folded. This was a very popular um, use as a game for a tool of research. It was about the DNA connectivity chains in some special virusing. I forgot about what it was exactly. But they gave the model to the players, and the players could rearrange it. And at some point, players actually solved these very complex folding structure of these mitochondrial DNA thing. And so actually players having fun with something, gathering a puzzle, produced a scientific outcome. Just uh, use uh, uh, Google search for folded and you will see all the papers. Here's another one, Evolving Planets. This is a game you can freely download to your iPad and even Android device. It originated here in Barcelona at the Supercomputing Center. And you play um, a spaceship mission where you put people on, where you put, um, what do you call them, away teams on planets, and you have to give them a strategy to solve your puzzle. So you're using agent-based model techniques to solve these puzzles, and you learn a lot about agent-based modeling on the way. Give it a try, just download it, it's for free. 
So a player is interested in reactions to his actions. A scientist wants data formed from interactions. So why don't we let players become the agent? And um, here's one example of a game I really like. It's called Don't Starve. And your basic mission is to don't starve. And as you see in the picture above, there are a lot of different biomes where you can interact with. There are a lot of different strategies. You can choose to survive. You always have to build a fire to survive at night. But from this very basic camp setup you see down there with a tent and a fire, you can become to very elaborate things. This player uses bees to harvest, harvest honey. He has different machines. He produces food on a very high level. Or you can even see players like this building a whole base with a lot of organizational features to it, chests, different cooking pots, and having a very um, extravagated economy running there. So here you see another example where people flooring the boards with stones, but all of this is not necessary. The only thing you need is a fire at night. So what drives players to build these um, big bases, to put so much time into it, and to find all these different strategies that you can apply to one game to winning it? So what game would you make? I would make a game about neolicization. And while we're loading this multiplayer mock-up experience you will enjoy with me now, um, I give you a very, very short rundown. I want to have a game where players can set agents. So there is not a player as an entity as a whole. You just have a bunch of agents. And you can only label zones to them from the real world. We pause the game here. And you see we have like game running around the wilds. We have fishing zones. We have these little berry bushes. And all we can do as a player is to set up zones where our agent, you see the two still hunter-gatherer people up there in the corner to interact with the landscape. So we choose a, so a zone or a task we want to apply. Like, ah, the animations are very fast here. I'm a little bit sorry, it was a little bit more elaborate and a little bit more slow, but you get it. We can set, for instance, a hunting zone. So the agents would not, will now take up the task of hunting on their own. Go to the zone, hunting the game that's in there. You see the paw print. Um, and bring in some meat so they can survive. And I can make a more elaborate setup and give them a fishing zone. And while the agent's handling all these tasks, we can observe where the player is placing zones, what is the first thing he tackles, does he want them to live off the river, does he want the players to live off the woods, does he want to clear the woods to have wood to build buildings and structures, and here you see a little bit more of it. Here are people going to the, um, to the wood zone and start chopping down trees. And what we can do is we can uh, track the behavior of the player. We can see what does he start with, what's the first task a player assigns, what are different groups of players plan to do with the environment. And we can go on to this more elaborate setup that I have here. You see now we have cleared some of the woods. It's the same place than before. They got children, we have now three agents running in the model, they already start to harvest grain in the corner. And we can have a manifold of tasks to choose from, like making weapons, um, we can, it's a little bit weird to stand over here. We can make necklaces so they can be happy, we can set up counting areas so um, they can um, worship their gods and be more happy. We could also plant different things. We can harvest berry bushes. So the main goal of this game would be to observe the players, tackling the problem of bringing hunter-gatherers to a Neolithic settlement, and see what strategy they actually choose. By comparing the strategies and getting all these data we get from the interactions of the player with the static world, we might be able to observe patterns of recurring strategies and compare them to the actually archaeological data we have. To make such a game a really good game, a really scientific game, of course, we would not just make up a map, but we would digitalize a little bit part of the world, think of an SRTM model, load this into the game so we have all the elevations, we might have the actually um, soil quality in there, we might have the spawning rates of fish and whatever, and so we can get data that's actually comparable to our archaeological outcome or to our archaeological recorded data. So we can track a lot of players and we can see a lot of behaviors and you will see that different strategies lead to different outcomes and that different strategies will also um, 
show um, different, what you call it, like um, different favorite strategies by different players. So um, if we look here, we will see that some of the players, um, the game is a mock-up, so I just put some of my colleagues there to say what strategy would you choose, and I just like write it down. But you see that a lot of um, people would not value religion very high in the beginning. They would always start to get a subsistence economy, to get people to be fat, to be happy, and then later on when they have like a surplus, they were saying, like, ah, now I would invest in religion, now I would give them a temple, now I would try to make my people happy. So this is probably something we can compare to what we know from the archaeological record. We first want people to have a surplus, and um, then they would start to invest in more elaborate structures and to form a society which could also afford um, tasks that are not for subsistence or economy, economical survival. So this is what the game could look in a later state. We see people like um, farming cattle, we see they have built a house, the woods are now cleared. It's very open landscape, we have a lot of grain, um, uh, grain producing and farming, we still have the fishing area around, we have a lot of agents running in the model, and this could be a way to bring games and science together and use games as tools of research to create interactions, record data from interactions, and in the end maybe get a gain and a surplus for our archaeological um, data for interpreting does the material come out we collect in the fields? Um, ah, okay, one more. We have the social settings. I forgot about that. So another thing that would be very interesting is that you could have these social tasks, and you can see if you want to have like a very strong leadership, a 100% leadership would be like a dictator-like person on top of it all, a 0% leadership would mean that no agent would step, step up as a leader and give the others order. We can say how important should religion be, how important should accessibility to the society be, so how easy should it be to become from a farmer to a chiefdom or something else. And we could also say how, um, how high we want them to use violence to fight off other groups they might encounter. So with playing around with the social settings, we might see that some strategies will only uh, work with a certain social setting. So this could also give us some um, insight in how the social settings of a Neolithic village or of a village in the very early Neolithic stages must have set up to actually function. Because a 100% leader that will not do any work might not be um, worthful. Also, a 100% violent strategy to just go there and rob all the other players might fall flat at some point if there are no other players around. So yeah, we can play around with these sliders to uh, see what happens. And by identifying strategies to see, um, our players tend to go for a more anarchic playing way, are they aim for chiefdoms, which ones stay for a longer time, so who can make a lot of years, will the anarchistic or the, 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 the farms that, that tends to be more anarchistic model, or will the more uh, evolved chiefdoms become the first to survive? would be an interesting research question to ask the data we can gain from the game. So, thank you for your attention.